Morning. If you will, let's turn to Psalm 18. Let's pray first. God, be with us today. Lord, don't leave us to ourselves. Don't let us come here at a routine and circumstance and pomp. Allow us to see your Son exalted and allow us to worship Him. Allow us to love Him. Allow us to kiss the Son, lest you be very angry. God, don't leave us to ourselves. We love you. Allow us to love you. Enable us to love your son. It's in his name that we ask it. Amen. All right. Psalm 18. We'll be in Genesis 19 in the second message. We're going to have our dessert first. We've been doing that more often lately. And I was told I didn't miss the mark last time I said that. But I hope to have our dessert first. This is the fourth Longest psalm in length. This is the fourth longest, so we ain't going to get through it all today. And we ain't in no hurry. It says in Psalm 18, verse 1, To the chief musician, this is the superscription, To the chief musician, a psalm of David, the servant of the Lord, who spake unto the Lord the words of this song, in the day that the Lord delivered him from the hand of all his enemies, and from the hand of Saul. And he said, I will love thee, O Lord, my strength. Charles is that people think of. <laughs> I just ain't that religious. <laughs> I, ain't, I thought of Ray Charles. And he's saying, America the beautiful. He said, God has shed his grace on thee. And he added into it. He said, and you ought to thank him for it. You ought to love him for it. We ought to. Isn't that right? Blind squirrel can find a nut on occasion. Huh? No pun intended. I will love thee, O Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer. My God, my strength, in whom I will trust. My buckler, the horn of my salvation and my high tower. I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from mine enemies. Who wrote this song? Well, it's good, good to know who wrote something. What's the context of it? What are they saying? Who are they writing it to? What's it about? We just vagrantly quote things in a horrible manner. And we ought not do those things. We ought to take some time and consider what the Lord gave us in our laps here. The superscription of the psalm says it's a psalm of David. David wrote this song. And how does he describe himself? If you saw David today, would you, hello king? Would you call him that? Hello God's prophet. Hello man after the Lord's own heart. Hello sweet psalmist of Israel. Hey David. <laughs> He'd probably slap you in the mouth if he called him them things. What? Paul, comma, an apostle. Wouldn't he? That's what it says here. A servant. A servant, not king of Israel, not all his wonderful titles he had. He says he's a servant. That great apostle used to write the bulk of the New Testament. Paul, comma, first and foremost, a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle. I was a servant first. The Lord just happened to call me and, and give me the job of the apostle, separated unto the gospel. I was his anyway. I'm just a servant. And he happened to separate me and put me to work. Unto the gospel concerning His Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. That servant Paul wrote most of what we turn to and what we read to in our hands today from prison. What did he tell Timothy? Don't be ashamed of me, the Lord's servant. In prison. I'm glad I'm not a felon, ain't you? I'm glad I'm not locked up in prison zooming with you all. It's hard to, hard to eat that way, isn't it? Many of the Psalms we read, they were written in a cave. 
David was on the run, wasn't he? We have it so good. We're not in prison. We're not in a cave. <laughs> we ought to be thankful. Huh? Who's this psalm to? It says, A psalm of David, the servant of the Lord, who spake unto the Lord the words of this song. This is a prayer to the Lord. This is David speaking to the Lord, and he happens to sing it. Sing it. You ever just have something so good to say, you just got to sing it? Woo! <laughs> he sang it. David's singing to the Lord, calling on the one worthy to be praised. And he's telling the Lord, I will love you. Y'all pay attention to me. He's saying, I will love you. You ever prayed that way? Don't you answer out loud. You be honest with yourself. You ever said, Lord, I'm going to love you. <laughs> Lord, I will love thee. Mm. Lord, I have loved you. Loved you for a long time. Because you first loved me. I don't love you as I should love you. I don't love you as I want to love you. I don't love you as you deserve to be loved. But I have loved you. And Lord, I love you today. I love you today. Because you first loved me. But you shed that love abroad in my heart. And today I love you. I love your word. I love your people. I want to be one with Christ to you. I want to be one with his people. I love them. I love him. And knowing who he is. Knowing what He's done for me. Knowing what He's done for my brothers and my sisters. I cannot see how, if He sustains me, how I could ever stop loving Him. If He has loved me, I've loved Him. I don't see how I could stop. Lord, I love You. We ought to pray that way, shouldn't we? Why was this written? What made the servant of the Lord, David, stop and consider this love? What made him? It says, Who spake unto the Lord the words of this song in the day that the Lord delivered him from the hand of all of his enemies and from the hand of Saul. You who love the Lord, you who he loved first, you've been delivered from all your enemies. You've been delivered from sin. You've been delivered from hell that earned. You've been delivered from the judgment that we rightfully deserve to face. That we willingly chose to depart ourselves from God and from His Word and, and we earn that, that judgment. He's delivered us from the grave, from that eternal second death. The Lord has delivered us from separation from Him. You get that? All of my enemies. A whole bunch of enemies that are bigger than Saul. And Saul. And what's in this world. All those things that are eternal consequence. The Lord has delivered me from these. That's why I sang to Him. And everything that's in this earth. We've got all those heavenly blessings in Christ. But we have earthly blessings too, don't we? Oh, Brother Maurice Montgomery used to say, we have Christ and all these things too. I ain't in a cave. I ain't in prison. We have air conditioning. There's, we have full bellies. We got running water, indoor toilets, a comfy bed. My bed's not a, a, a cave and a stone pillow. And Christ. Christ and all these things. What a blessing that is, isn't it? Children of God, we see Christ in our daily lives. And what things? How do we see Him daily? Well, I was a good little child and I gave Him ten whole minutes of my day to read. No! Quit that and go out in the world. Lord, put us here on this earth. <laughs> Gotta go do things. And see Him in His creation. See Him in His providence. You ever seen an ant? There's a couple of them in this state. I can't... I got One bit me the other day, it still swelled up. <laughs> I ain't got no wrinkles. I would have just let them bite me all over. I'd be handsome looking. You see an ant and you think of Christ. You think of His Word that He gave us. Like Aaron Proverbs 6, 6. Consider the ant, O sluggard. It has no ruler. It has no boss. Someone to guide it and teach it how to do these things. And it's got enough sense to take its meat in the summertime. It's got enough sense to bring it in the harvest so it ain't starving to death in the winter. I see an ant crawling across my driveway and I think, one, I deserve to be crushed like that ant. Just without thought. Stepped on. And I thought the Lord's provided for that end, and He's provided for me eternally. Something. You get all that from an ant? Well, if He's put that ant in my thoughts and Christ in my thoughts, yeah. 
Yeah, this ain't a, a Wednesday and Sunday mind exercise. Well, this is whenever I'm scheduled to go worship God. That's when we'll do it. This is the Lord Jesus Christ, our life. This is our life. All of my enemies and Saul. And Saul. <laughs> oh, Brother William Huntington. He said he briefly wrote something. Y'all get on to me if I briefly write 25 pages about something. But he said, <clears throat> Daily observations of the judgment, mercies, and providences of God are very establishing to faith. They are. He's right. He knows what he's talking about. For God hath promised us that at His hand shall be known towards His servant and His indignations towards His enemies. Every day. We're going to sit in the next hour. The, the blessings and the curses of the Lord. The blessings and the judgment of God. God kills people. Do you know that? God the Bible kills people. And He saves people too. I've seen that throughout my life. And I'll weep as I see it more. That's not a, I'm going to give you a good history lesson. Like that fellow was real loud 70 years ago. That breaks my heart. When I tell people stuff and they shut their eyes and they don't want to hear nothing I have to say. I feel like, Jared, but Lord, you deceived me. I ain't saying your words no more. <laughs> it ain't, ain't a lick of them listening to the word I say. And in his bone, in these bones, this word just burns. It's got to come out. I'm like a shook up bottle. It's got all of the pressure. Shook up thing of soda. It's just going to pop out. To the chief musician, a psalm of David, the servant of the Lord, who spake unto the Lord the words of this song in the day that the Lord delivered him from the hand of all his enemies and from the hand of Saul. And he said, I will love thee, O Lord, my strength. Why will David love the Lord? Because the Lord's his golden parachute. Is that why he loves the Lord? Lord, you can save me from the law. Wonderful. You've saved me from hell. That's great. From all these earthly devices. There's just hindrances. I had to go out and work hard. Used to. And I don't now, Lord. You just feed me like the sparrows. No! No! He loves the Lord because of who the Lord is. You don't worship benefits. You worship the person. You take that to the bank. Worship means sacrifice. We've looked at that before, haven't we? Love means sacrifice. When Abraham and Isaac went up that mountain to worship, what was it going to do? Sacrifice. What's love do? Love sacrifices. Love sacrifices. And that's the heart of it all. He loved us first. He gave Himself for us, didn't He? Love sacrifices. Paul wrote about that. He said, Though I speak with the tongues of men and angels and have not love, I'm become a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. Love's to a person or people you know that? And it does something. What does it do? Love suffereth long. It does something. It's kind. That's a verb. Love's kind. Charity envieth not. It vaunteth not itself. It's not puffed up. It doesn't behave itself unseemly. It seeketh not her own. How easy is it for me to seek my own? I've been looking back like Lot's wife. For two weeks now, and I'm so depressed, I can't see straight. I can't hardly. I'm as straight as a gum barrel and just as empty. I feel just dead inside. Why? I'm seeking my own. Isn't it? It'd just be so much more comfortable for me to do something else for this or that or whatever. Isn't it? Love doesn't seek her own. Not easily provoked, thinketh no evil, rejoiceth not in iniquity, but rejoiceth in truth. It bears. What does love do? Love bears. That sounds good till you've got a load on your back. <laughs> Love bears all things. It believes all things. It hopes all things. And it endures. It endures all things. Charity never faileth. Love draws near. Love draws near. You know that? Let me read you something. Matthew 15. I'll read it to you. The Lord was speaking. He said, Oh, you hypocrites. Well, did Isaiah prophesy of you, saying, This people draweth nigh unto me with their mouth. Oh, I believe the Lord. I do. They honoreth me with their lips. Mm -hmm. oh, doctrines of grace, I got you. Yet their heart is far from me. Love draws near. Their heart's far from me. But in vain do they worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. What does the Lord say? Go away from me, all you that labor in heaven. No, He said, come unto me. Love draws near, doesn't it? Draws near. 
He said in Luke 21, 28, he said, whenever that sky, the Son of Man comes, and you see them skies opening up, which might be a lot sooner than we think it is. Might be today for us. And he said, look up, because your resurrection draws nigh. That one that loved you throughout time with everlasting love, he's going to come to you. Did he leave the 90 and 9? We'll look at this a lot. I don't want to preach both of them at the same time. Did he leave the 90 and 9 and go out to that one that was by itself and say, how you doing? All right, keep it up, little buddy. No. He brought it. He picked it up, pulled it out, brought it to himself. Love draws nigh. Doesn't it? I will love thee, Lord. And he lists seven things here. I'll try to go through them quickly. Seven things. And I, the first is so appropriate. Psalm 18, verse 2. The Lord is my rock. Why do I love Him? He's my rock. He's my foundation. He's my rock. That's why I love Him. My hope is built on Him and nothing less. And Hannah prayed that. She mentioned that in her prayers. She said, There is none holy as Thee, Lord, for there is none beside Thee, neither is there any rock like our God. That's a foundation. And that rock that loves us, I said it does something, right? Deuteronomy 32, 4 says, He is the rock. His work is perfect. How can a rock work? God does. <laughs> he does. His love is perfect. His work is perfect. For all His ways are judgment, a God of truth and without iniquity, just and right is He. All throughout the Old Testament we read of the rock, don't we? It provides us Provides for them, and it's our protection. In those countries in the Middle East, you got in the middle of the desert, here even, go hiking. The sun just starts beating down on you. Find you a nice big cold rock. Get up in the shade of that thing. Isn't that nice? Isn't that wonderful? As Isaiah 2.10 says, Enter into the rock and hide thee in the dust, for fear the Lord and the glory of His majesty. Go to this foundation we have. It provided the water of life. For Israel, they went through that wilderness, didn't they? Christ, that smitten rock. That's our foundation, the waters of life that flows from our belly, from our inner man. And all did drink the same spiritual drink, for they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them, and that rock was Christ. Lord, you're my rock. I love you. That rock's a man. Isaiah 32 says, Behold, a king shall reign in righteousness, and princes shall rule in judgment, and a man shall be as a hiding place from the wind, and a covert from the tempest, a river of waters, and a dry place, and as a shadow of a great rock in a weary land. Shadow of the rock in the weary land. You in a weary land? If I could find some folks that's in a weary land, boy, I got a rock for them. <laughs> you t are you getting sunburnt? <laughs> you thirsty? It's all in that rock, isn't it? Rock's our foundation. That's what everything is built on. If you miss Christ, you missed it all. If, that's, if He's an add-on later, you'll die in your sins. He must be our foundation. He told us that in Matthew 7, Therefore, whosoever heareth these things, sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him to a wise man who built his house upon a rock. And the rains descended and the floods came and the winds blew and it beat upon that house and it fell not for because it was founded on a rock. You want to build your house on sand? It's a fool. It's a fool. Either Christ will be our rock, either He will be our foundation, our all in all that we are standing on, we are close to, or He's going to fall on us and crush us when we're giving lip service to Him. He said, what is then... That is written, the stone which the builders rejected, the same has become the head of the corner. Whosoever shall fall upon that stone shall be broken. You fall on Christ. Fall on His feet. Fall on your face. Oh, you might have a broken heart. You'll live. But on whomsoever it shall fall, it'll grind them to powder. What is built on the Lord our rock? The Lord is my rock, verse 2, and my fortress. We all know what a fortress is. Big castle. Isn't it? High walls, protection. There's watchmen on the walls <laughs> that look out for the people inside the fortress. Isn't it? There's armaments there. They protect them from the enemies. We see that city of refuge. Oh, our enemies are going to kill us. All those enemies that the Lord's defeated for us, they're going to get you if we, if we can't make it into that fortress, if we can't make it into that city. I must be in Him. I must be with Him. I must be made one with Him. He's our fortress. 
Satan said of Job, you, I can't touch him. The Lord said, you, you, have you considered Job? Satan didn't bring him up. The Lord said, have you considered my servant, Job? He said, I can't touch him. You've got a hedge about him. There's a fortress built all around that man. How will I get into that fortress that's built on a rock? <laughs> How will I get into Christ that's built on Christ? I'm going to have to be delivered like Lot from Sodom. Somebody's going to have to take me by the hand and lead me. Said the Lord is my rock, He's my fortress, and my deliverer. He's the one that hedges us about top, bottom, left, and right. And He's the very one that delivers us to Himself. He hedges us in His love. That's what He told Hosea, wasn't it? He said, I'm going to go to Gomer. I'm going to lure her in the wilderness. And I'm going to hedge up their way with thorns. And I'm going to make a wall and she shall not find her path. He's our fortress that delivers us to... <laughs> There's a fortress around us hedged about all the way to Christ our fortress. There in Luke 11, the Lord spoke of that strong man. He was always at peace. Everything square away. He wasn't in fear and trembling. He didn't see his salvation in fear and trembling, did he? Everything's fine. I got this squared away. I checked the block. And then a stronger came in and spoiled all his goods, didn't he? Christ is that stronger man. <laughs> and whenever Satan has a hold of us and we think everything's just so peaches and cream, and everything's squared away and we're good to go, Christ comes in and shakes things up, don't he? <laughs> Takes all of our, our trust in this world and our hope in ourselves and our self-righteousness and gets rid of it. And we're bound to Him. We're standing on Him. We're protected by Him. He's delivered us to Himself. We're pulled into the house by God. <laughs> that rock, the wall, the deliverance, it's going to be proved to us. God gives something. If He gives faith, He's going to prove the faith. If He, if he gives love, He's going to have that love do something. If He puts a, You ever seen two evenly yoked oxen just standing in the field? Hmm. Hanging out all day? No, if he puts a yoke on something, what's it going to do? It's going to pull something. Servants, not lazy people sitting around doing nothing. Servants are going to serve him. They're going to pray for his people. They're going to support the gospel. They're going to go out and do whatever he puts in their hand to do, and they're going to do it faithfully. That's what they're going to do. There he is. The Lord is my rock, my fortress, my deliverer, my God, my strength, in whom I will trust. Through all those storms that He sends, through those attacks of the enemies He allows, through the earth shaking underneath us, whatever it may be, we're going to be brought to trust the Lord and trust His strength. He's going to prove it to us. Paul had that thorn in his flesh and he begged the Lord. I thought, well, why should I even ask if the Lord refused Paul? But oh, what a gift He gave Paul. Paul asked three times, Lord, take His thorn from me. He said to me, my grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. When I'm brought down to nothing, if the Lord brings, I mean, just strips me, where I have nothing left in me, He might be just about to use me. Maybe He's getting ready to bless His people. Boy, I don't feel good. That's, empty's a lot of echo in there sometimes, isn't it? And Paul said, most gladly, therefore, because his, he told me his strength will be made in my weakness, will be perfect in my weakness, most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Strike on, Lord. Strike on. Samson, that Nazarite, he didn't drink. He didn't cut his hair. He didn't touch dead bodies. He was separated to God, wasn't he? And he was a man that was so strong. But he laid his lap, his head in the lap of Delilah one too many times. And he woke up without strength one morning. The Lord be my strength and don't let me lay my head in the lap of this world any longer. Oh, don't let me trust in myself. Don't let me turn to these foolish things that encompass all of my thoughts. <laughs> let me see you as my strength. Let me see my weakness. That's fine. Let me see you as my strength. People talk about strong faith. If it's the faith of Christ, it cannot fail. If it's His faith put in you, 
His gift that he gives to his people, it ain't going to fail. If it's anything of yours alone, you don't have any. You ain't got none. <laughs> While we're on this rock inside the fortress, being delivered, seeing God's strength, trusting him through all this, him making us trust him, we have a personal defense and covering. Verse 2 says, The Lord is my rock, my fortress, my deliverer, my God, my strength, and whom I will trust, my buckler. He's my buckler. I won't put you on the spot. This ain't a Sunday school. <laughs> What's a buckler? I told you a few times. Ain't it? It's a small shield used for defense or offense. Alligator hide. It means both. It's a small shield. It's a lasting personal defense and a covering. He's my buckler. He's my protective armor. He's my small shield that's just for me. Why do you need a shield? You take uh, Captain America's shield. You just walk around all day with it, go to the mall. What you doing? I'm getting gas. <laughs> you need a shield because you're at war. There's fiery darts of the devil, fiery darts of the accuser, fiery darts of this old man telling my new man, you ain't nothing. Lord couldn't love you. Look at what you are. I need him. I need him. He's the offensive too. Verse 2. The Lord is my rock, my fortress, my deliverer, my God, my strength, in whom I trust, my buckler, the horn of my salvation. What's a horn? It ain't an antler. It's a, antlers fall off, horns stay. They grow. That's an offensive weapon. That's what a goat has, a, a bull has. <laughs> Don't mess, you mess with the bull, you get the horns, right? He's the horn of my salvation. He's the one that actioned and did this. It's what butt backs. <laughs> when we get butted by them goats, here's what God says. But, 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 quit butting. <laughs> Thus saith the Lord. That's what butts back. He's the horn of my salvation. The work's done. But also that hollowed out horn. <laughs> when the offensive battles are over, when the war is accomplished, the warfare is accomplished, when the battle's won, it's used to call everyone. You ever seen them take them old horns? And call out. Signal others. What's that? That's our banner. We can hear a banner. We can see Christ Jehovah Nisi, our banner, but we hear him. What does it cry? The, the supper's ready. <laughs> Come and eat. The battle's won. He's the captain of our salvation. He's the horn of our salvation. You remember Zacharias, John the Baptist's father, and Lord muted him until John was born. And he said, all right, I'll cause it John. He wrote it down. Everybody's amazed, right? Well, then the Lord let him speak again. Zacharias was filled with the Holy Ghost and prophesied, saying, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he hath visited and redeemed his people. That's a good thing that first have come out of your mouth after six months of silence, isn't it? And he hath raised up an horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David. John the Baptist was just a voice. He was, a, he was an empty horn getting blue, right? He was a voice in the wilderness. But he told of Christ, the horn of our salvation. Behold the Lamb. Behold the Lamb. There He is. He was just a horn blowing that the battle was won. Why will David love the Lord? Why will we love Him too? It's all that's good so far. <laughs> Is that appealing? It ain't God help you. One more thing. My high tower. My high tower. Being set on Christ. Having Him as our fortress, our rock, our fortress. He's delivered us there. We're with Him. Drawed nigh. He's our strength. He's the one we trust. He's our defense. He's our covering. He's the horn of our salvation. He's the only message we have for the sin-cursed world. And Him being our high tower. Now we're up high. What happens when you're in a high tower? You see everything clearly. You see everything clearly. That's the only way to clearly see things in truth is to be in Christ. Mankind can figure some things out. Outside of Christ, you ain't got no handle on what's going on. You don't. Could you imagine if... Uh, I can't get to it. If Peter didn't tell us about Lot and all we have was Genesis 19 and what happened before that. Would you think Lot was a righteous man? Uh, no. What about Rahab? Mm -mm -mm. What about anybody else? What about Hosea? Man, you enter into that, buddy. Shoo. No. Gomer. Well, of course not Gomer. No, Hosea neither. 
He sees things as they are. And if we see him and, and what we are and how he saves sinners, now we've got to handle on everything else. Go vote. That's good for you. The Lord gave you that right. You go vote for president. And, and, and old Matthew Henry said, everybody says you've got to choose between two evils. That's what it feels like when you vote for president. Isn't it? And he said, well, don't choose neither. <laughs> if you have to choose between two, two evils, don't choose either one of them. But go vote. And then once you vote, uh, whoever's in that office, God put them there. Pray for them. Pray for them. Isn't that right? How, how can I do that? But, 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 Christ is my high tower. I know He rules and reigns off. The government's on His shoulder. Just like you pack it over your shoulder. Not two shoulders oh, and barren. Throw it over your shoulder, it's fine. The Lord's doing it. He's ruling and reigning. He's saving His people. Do you love Him? <laughs> Does that make Tuesday at 10.37 a.m. a little bit easier? Oh, there's traffic! <laughs> I can see things from Christ, my high tower. Now it's all right. It's all right. We have some peace, don't we? It said verse 3, I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised. Is He worthy? If He's all these things to us, He is worthy to be praised. He's worthy to be worshipped. He's worthy to serve. David, His servant. I don't want to be a servant. I want to be a boss. I want to be His servant. I want to be a servant in His house. He's worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from mine enemies. Seeing all He is for, seeing the love that saved us, that preserved us, I'm going to call upon Him because He's worthy to be praised. And you call on Him as you are. Call on Him. Call on Him. Call on Him as your rock, as your foundation, your fortress, your deliverer, your protector, all of your sight, <laughs> how you see everything. I want to see it as you are. Lord, let me be a liar. You be true. And you shall be saved from all your enemies. Call on Him while He's near. Seek Him while He may be found. Today's the day of salvation. David desired to be with his Lord. David didn't want to die and go see his son, did he? He said, boy, when I die, I'm going to go see Him. I'll get to be with my son. That's all he talked to his friends about. Did he say, whenever I die, I'm going to go see Mommy? Oh, I finally get to see Mommy again. I'll be glad to see my mother and my father in heaven, but I'm not sitting around pining all day, like, oh, I hope I see Daddy again. He wanted to see... His foundation. He wants to see Christ the rock. He wants to see His Redeemer, the one that loved Him. He said that in Psalm 73, Whom have I in heaven but Thee? Did He have some folks that He knew in heaven? Of course He did. That's already in glory. Who do I have but You, Lord? There's none upon the earth that I desire beside Thee. I desire Him. I desire Him. I'm married to that woman. I know her. I desire to continue to learn more of her. I desire to be with her. Now, if I told you that, if I said, oh, let me tell you about the love for my bride. And then I never had anything to do with her. <laughs> Every third year, on special days, or some, once a year on our anniversary, I went, and, I went and saw her. What would you think about my love? You said, well, let's model our love like Kevin's love. Hogwash. That love doesn't mean squat. That ain't worth two pennies, is it? If Christ is your all in all, that's because He's made you draw nigh. He's pulled you into His home, <laughs> into His rock, His dwelling, His fortress. He will keep you there. And you'll be tickled to death. And you will have Him. You'll love Him for it. You'll love Him. Because that's all an act of love, isn't it? All right. Father, be with us and forgive us for what we are. Lord, allow us to see Christ for what He is. Allow us to praise Him because He is worthy to be praised. We put this song in our hearts. Allow us to have comfort as we go through this world and its wickedness. And we see our wickedness in it. How prone we are to wonder. Allow us to sing His praises. Thank You for this day, Lord. Be with every soul here. and Call Your people out in this county and in this country and in this world until that last sinner is called home, Lord, and we can see Him as He is. High and lifted up. Thank you for this day. It's in Christ's name that we ask it. Amen.